Hey guys, what's going on? This is Mariah from Mika, and you're watching Metal Nation. Awesome, Mariah. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fantastic, but I got to say I'm just slightly bummed because you were going to make a huge announcement today, and we were going to talk about it, but you held off now. I know. I know. Uh, it's well because it's like you know, everything is so uncertain, <laughs> especially right now. So it's like. Um, you know, there, there were just a few things that happened that we were like, oh, you know, it's not the perfect time yet. But something big's coming around the bend. We can be excited yeah. about when do you yeah. think you might be making that announcement, whatever it may be. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Uh, I'm not, it'll definitely be within the next few weeks. Excellent. Yeah. All right. My dog, well, Let's introduce the world that, that may not know you yet, although you're blowing up all over the internet and everything. You've had a pretty amazing start to your career. You were on The Voice, obviously. You've opened for Joan Jett, Striper, and of course our dear friends in Hailstorm. And you've released some amazing songs to kickstart your career. Has it been a bit surreal for you going through all of this? It really, it, it has. Um at certain points been very surreal like um you know like playing with hailstorm and joan jett and you, you know just all these and, and like being on the stage on the voice so those things were definitely very surreal um but yeah it's just kind of it's weird because i i've i don't know re, like i really don't know anything else because i've i've been doing this my whole life so I right. I mean obviously not on this scale but uh I don't know it, it it felt so real but on the other hand it felt it felt right you know uh and, and it felt like all my hard work had you know finally started to pay off you know well, and you got to, as we already know, you got to spend some time with Joan Jett and, of course, our dear friend Lizzie Hale, who's just such an incredible person. The whole band is. Yeah. Um, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll fanboy out with you while you fangirl out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but getting to uh, spend some time with them, not just legends, um, right. but women with strong voices, strong personalities, stage presence, also guitar players and everything. What did you take away from those experiences of getting to spend time with them? Um, I, I mean, I really just took away that you need to always, because there were times where, because I was 16 when I opened for, I know, 16, I was 16 or 17, uh, I'm 19 now, um, so I was still, and, and I'm a, ex I'm an extreme introvert, you know, um, so I never really, before I was on The Voice, I hardly really said anything to anyone. Like, I, I'm still coming out of my shell very slowly. Um, and so, I guess one thing, and, and, and I always doubted myself uh, whenever I would go on stage. I'm like, you know, should I say this? Should I not? What if I say this and people laugh or think it's stupid or I stutter and I sound dumb? And, you know, like, just things like that. Um, and I guess being around Hailstorm and seeing and just watching Lizzie perform several times, it's like uh, I learned to not stress so much about that stuff because Lizzie's like just so herself on stage and she just says, you know what I mean? Like I've been to, to several Hailstorm shows and she, you know, Lizzie talks a lot sometimes on stage and it made me realize, hey, there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Uh, take every chance you can to connect with your fans. Absolutely. She knows how to own every moment and oh, just yeah. go with it. And, oh, and people love her for it. And, and I've yeah. seen uh, many clips of you live and, and you have a strength. As a matter of fact, I'll talk about it a little bit later, but there was somebody that you reminded me of and it wasn't even a female artist, but we'll <laughs> talk about that <laughs> a little bit later on. Before we get into your new music and everything, Obviously, you were on The Voice, four chair turn uh, when you performed um, Heart there. And I know you've talked about this a lot in the past, but for, again, those who haven't learned about you yet, tell us a little bit about what the experience on The Voice was like 
And how difficult was it for you to pick the team that you chose? And did you have regrets about the team you picked later? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, you know, when I was on The Voice, I, it was so weird because I didn't even expect it. It just happened. Like, I didn't even realize that they have talent scouts that, you know, go on social media and, and they look for people that are, could be possible contestants. And so I, I got an email one day and it was like, hey, this is so-and-so and I work on the voice casting and stuff. And I thought my dad was like, yeah, uh, I got an email from the voice. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's not funny. Stop playing. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh my freaking gosh, it's real. And I was pretty hesitant. I was like, you know, I don't know. I don't know how these shows do with rock people and, um, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to regret anything. And then I realized, you know, hey, slow down. You're 16, you know, uh, you got plenty of time. Um, and to be honest, it would be stupid to not take that opportunity, you know? And really the biggest thing with those TV shows nowadays is just exposure, you know? Right. So that's, that's, so I decided to do it. Um, and so, yeah, the process was very, very, <laughs> uh smooth for us and it was very long but it was very very fun and i've met a lot of great people um a lot of people that have forever impacted my life and how i view life um so yeah and as far as picking the the team that i picked i had it in my mind <laughs> i had everything all planned out all right D doesn't everyone when they go on that show <laughs> uh, then they don't realize how different it is when you get up on stage and i'm like yeah i'm gonna you know all the pre-interviews before the performances i'm like yeah i'm gonna choose adam if he turns around and uh you know because because he's the rock guy on the right. show you know and so i was like all right i'll choose adam i didn't first of all i wasn't expecting all four of them to turn around. I just, I just wasn't expecting it because you, you don't know, you can't, you know what I mean? So I was just like, all right, I just need one person. But then all four of them turned around and I was like, well, crap, I have some decisions to make. Um, and, you know, being 16 at the time, something about Miley and how she fought for me uh, really resonated. And she, the thing that made my decision was she was like, you know, you're young, you're 16, and I got my start in the industry when I was even younger, and I could really kind of help you navigate through the industry as a young female. And I was like, okay, you know, I really like that kind of big sister energy. And I didn't really feel that much of a connection with Adam. I, I just really didn't. <laughs> and I wasn't expecting to not feel a connection with him, because right, we're both rockers and, and whatever, so, but, it was just a last minute decision. You know, I, I couldn't tell you. The energy was just pointing towards Miley at, at that time. And she was the first one to turn, so you know. Right. And that's the other thing is she was the first one to turn. Like I didn't have to, you know, hit some big huge notes halfway through the song for her to be like, okay, yeah, I really want to work with this person. Yeah, she dug you right from the beginning and everything, yeah. so. All right, so new music from you. You've released, I believe, a couple tracks so far this year. Um, uh, the first one was Champion at the beginning of the year, and then Better Off Alone. Let's start with Better Off Alone. What can you tell us about that one? So Better Off Alone is a song that I wrote, actually, with a really, really talented group of writers. Uh, some of them are Grammy-nominated, and they've worked with people like Hailstorm and Chris Daughtry and Shinedown and um you know we reached out and they were like yeah we would love to work with you and I was like oh my gosh holy crap um and we ended up writing Better Off Alone and it's about you know it's it's basically about that whole uh somebody has you on a fishing line and they just keep throwing you in and, and reeling you back in and throwing, you know what I mean? So uh, it's basically about, hey, you know what? I'm kind of sick of this uh, whole game that you're playing. And then it's like, whenever I go off and live my own life and realize that I'm being played, you get pissed at me and you get obsessive. It's kind of like people having entitlement to you. Right. Even though they don't really want anything to do with you. <laughs> um, if that makes sense. And so 
that's what that song is about. So it's like, hey, I'd just be better off alone. Um, How did I know she'd use a fishing reference in there too, right? I know. I, <laughs> of course I would. <laughs> and to get your other big hobby and love in there, your passion, where, where am I? Right there, right. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's on the cover of Better Off Alone. She's got the snake around her neck. She loves snakes, reptiles. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, that, that, uh, that was my ball path. Python. That was my ball python. Uh, Patch was her name. Yeah. Nice. So the other song was Champion. You uh, you released Champion at the beginning of the year, and that one really resonated with me. Um, I work in law enforcement. I've done a lot of counseling and stuff. I work with a lot of people that have a lot of mental health stuff that goes on with a lot of their things, and that really struck a chord with me. Cause I don't know what Champion's about, but there was some of that in there. It felt like. What is that song for you? Um, I, well, actually, first of all, thank you, you know, for your work in, in law enforcement. I really, you know, I appreciate law, law enforcement and I really, really respect you guys. Um, and second of all, yeah, Champion actually is about mental health. Uh, I've struggled pretty much in my, my whole entire young life, I guess, uh, with mental health and so that that really is what that song is about and it it's uh it is it, it's meant to be empowering but at the same time it's also a cry for help i guess you know to i mean to whoever in anybody's situation for me it's it was god you know um but whatever anybody else would like to apply that to that's up to them but yeah that that song is about my uh struggles with mental illness and I think it's very important, and because of your youth and, and your stage and everything, you have a voice to be able to tell people it's okay to talk about that stuff. Right. You know? yeah. No, exactly. And uh, it's, it's something that I am really, really passionate about because there's just so many kids that don't, you know, young adults, you know, even adults, you know, like middle-aged, I've met middle-aged people that still don't you know, they never talked about it. They never got the help that they needed because they were, you know, they didn't want to be seen in a different light. And they're like, hey, you know, this song really encouraged me to seek help and, you know, start to be able to live my life freer. Right. <laughs> and so it's something that's that I'm really, really passionate about. So I, I agree, people, it needs to be talked more about, you know. Yeah, you got to break away from the stigma and empower yourself. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, and you've released a number of singles, and, and I, I love all the stuff that I've heard. Thank you. No, no EPs or albums yet. Is that is that primarily because of the nature of the industry, or more because people, let's face it, have <laughs> short attention spans these <laughs> days? Um, I I do have an EP out, but it's from when I was like, I released it when I was like fourteen. Right. Um, it's called Bring It On, and it's got it only has six songs on it. Um. But yeah, as far as like my, I, I don't, you're right, I don't have any albums or EPs. And that's just because, um, you know, I figured that right now at this point in my career, I'm not, you know, I'm not huge or anything. And so the thing is, is I figured I'd just keep trying to find hits and, and you know, great songs that I can put out, you know, every few months or where people can just have something to listen to, but not necessarily an album because, you know, albums take time and they cost a lot of money. And um, it's just something that I think is, and plus that's how things go today. You know, people just release singles and, and people listen to them and stuff. So, yeah, but I, when I get all my, you know, when I get all my, everything lined up, I definitely do want to make an album, you know. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come soon, but I just don't know when. Well, and I'm sure your father bemoans this. We grew up in that era where we would sit for hours reading the lyrics, looking at the artwork and everything. Yeah, and nowadays, yeah. it's play one song, move on, play another song, oh, move on. It, yeah, it really is sad because I, I love CDs, and I love... I loved doing that, too. I loved looking inside and, and reading the lyrics, and 
you know, looking on the back and seeing all the credits and the people that they thank for helping them on their journey. And like, I just, I just really, really loved that, that aspect. And I, and I grew up as well, you know, going to FYE and buying every single CD that I could. <laughs> so I, I agree. It's, it's kind of unfortunate in my opinion. Yeah, there, there was sort of a ritual to going to a record store and flipping through the albums. And right. I, I remember buying an album in 1978, 1976 it was, way before your time, <laughs> of Rainbow when Ronnie James Dio was on it. It was a live oh, yeah. album. And I just looked at the cover with that big rainbow and those guys rocking out. I'm like, this just looks cool. And I bought it. Same yeah. thing. Yes. Oh, no, yeah. It's, it, the, the art totally has so much to do with it. So I... I guess there's positives and negatives to it. Yeah. Well, and you've been paying a lot of homage lately because you've been sort of stuck, especially in New York. You guys have really been in lockdown. You've been doing a lot of great covers and everything, including uh, the one that you did with your friend Brooke, uh, Hearts Barracuda, which is blowing up on the internet. And it's just a phenomenal performance from both of you. Thank you. Yeah, that was, we didn't even expect, we were just like, hey, want to put a cover out? Uh, because it's quarantine and you know we have nothing to do <laughs> and so let's just make covers and, and post it and you know we we knew that people would like the idea of the two of us together uh especially in this area just because you know brooke is very well known and um you know i think that in the overall general consensus in the rock community is people people like whenever you know there's a female band and so we knew that people would be you know excited and happy about it but we didn't expect it to like you said like just completely blow up and so uh, or, or at least i didn't and so that was a very humbling experience it's it's been awesome so you got, you just, it was just in April, I think you released Better Off Alone. Do you have uh, a new track that you're working on to get ready to release sometime later, maybe this summer or early fall or something, or? I do, I have some, I do have some tracks that I'm working on, and, uh, you know, and even, even the ones that I'm not actually working on to put out right now, I'm constantly doing writing every single day, so th there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of songs, you know, within the next several months all right so getting back into that getting to know you a little bit i know you get a lot of comparisons vocally to to lizzie a little bit to amy lee and of course ann wilson and, and i hear all of those things when i first saw you perform and i think it was the, the first performance i actually saw was the barracuda performance i immediately thought of this guy from a band way back in the 70s called y and t and Dave Manichetti, he's lead guitarist, got the curly head of hair, the big booming voice, plays lead guitar, does it all. He's, and I saw a lot of that in you, that you're very much this triple threat in terms of your talent and everything. But beyond that, you really just have your own unique style. And I know it's still developing and building, but you can already see it. And, and I think that's the most important thing. People want to make comparisons, but you're you. Right. Thank you. I really, really appreciate that. I, because it's so, it's so stressful in this industry, you know, nowadays, because there's just so, it's just so oversaturated with people that it's like, you need to stick out. And it's so stressful sometimes because you're like, oh, can I do that? Or can I wear this? Or does it look, you know what I mean? So I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, you, you just have to, what, the, the term these days, do you, uh, you just have yeah, to. Yeah, you do you know, That's what get out there and do your thing because you've got right. the personality and the talent and everything else will follow. So I know you, you alluded to this earlier. You got into music very, very young, listening to a lot of the music that, you're, that your dad loved and grew up with, 70s, 80s, all of that stuff. Great, great, great musical era. Um, and Joe Perry became sort of the guitar player that you, that you cinched on. Um, Tell me a little bit about that with your, your passion for picking up the guitar and everything. I, you know, I uh, loved Aerosmith the first time that I heard them. And it was, and the first song I heard was Dream On. We were in, we were in the car, it was on the radio. I, I still remember it, and I was like five at the time. And I was like, oh my gosh, Dad, I love this song. Because I, I really liked it, you know, and then when it got to the, to the bridge, when he, you know, the, 
when he, when he like start, you know, starts doing that screaming thing. I was five year old me was like, what? Dad, who is this guy? Oh my gosh. Like it was, it was crazy to me. And so he was like, oh, well, it's a band called Aerosmith, you know, um, they're around when I was a kid and I just fell in love with them. Um, and then I would see like, dude looks like a lady pop up on, um, you know, the eighties pop up videos. Right. In, on Saturday mornings and I just loved it and there was something specifically about I mean obviously Steven Tyler is a character I he's great I love him he's got his totally his own thing and he's awesome but there was just something specifically about Joe Perry that stuck out to me and I don't know what it was I just loved his vibe I loved his style and I loved the way his guitar sounded like he, his he's just one of those guitar players where he plays and you're just like, that's Joe Perry. I know that that's Joe Perry. Right. He's got such a unique sound and there's so much feeling and soul in his playing. And obviously at five, I didn't, I wasn't thinking, wow, so soulful. But <laughs> like, I, there was just something about it that I was like, oh my gosh, I need to get one of these things that you hold and play. Um, and so when I was six, my grandmother got me a toy guitar from Target. It was like 20 bucks and it had like the built-in amplifier that just was battery operated and you flip the switch on and off. And um, I locked myself in my room and I wouldn't come out until I like just learned one new Aerosmith song, like a day. And it just became a passion of mine. Well, it's phenomenal that it did. I always refer to Joe Perry as Joe Cool because he just always had that, that suave debonair cool elegance to him you know right and he's just so and he's like it's almost like he's like quiet you know like he's but he's but he's not when he plays you know like he's he's so quiet and he's got like that like you just said like cool you know laid back chill you know and then he just kicks ass on guitar yeah steve steve opens his mouth and it all comes out joe just touches the frets and boom yeah yeah they balance each other out yeah so before we get out of here um i wanted to talk about your fishing a little bit but yeah. actually i want to back up real quick vocally because with a lot of female vocalists i mean we talked about who people sort of have compared you to but have more of your um more of your influences vocally been men or women because i've noticed a lot of time with female vocalists it's mostly male vocalists that have influenced them um, hmm. I, I would say my first, like, real vocal influence that I, like, started to really sing a lot was Chris Daughtry. Um, you know, because I would just, I loved his music. I would play guitar to it all the time, and I would sing, but, you know, he's a male, so I, I, I didn't, and he's got a, a lower range for, for me, anyway, so it wasn't, like, singing singing um because i was still super super young but by the time i was like nine or ten i the first song i ever sang was an adele song um and i just really really enjoyed it i was nine years old and then i started i was like hey i love singing let me get singing lessons so i got singing lessons and um around that time I became a huge fan of Evanescence because my parents would always have the CD in the car and um as far as vocal influences Amy Lee is my first real vocal influence and she is my biggest I mean she just kind of everything that I did when I was like 11 12 it, it all revolved around Amy Lee like I was like okay, but is, is it, that's good, but it's not Amy Lee, it's not, the, you know what I mean, like, everything revolved around her, and I just thought it, she was so cool how she played the piano so amazingly, um, and so, yeah, and then a couple of years after Evanescence came, Hailstorm, and Lizzie Hale was just insane, because she not only sang amazingly, but she also, I, I didn't, I'd never seen another female that played guitar and sang like that. It's just, it was just insane to me. And I saw her live 
around here before before Elstrom got like huge. Uh, I saw them live and I was like, oh my gosh, I love this band. I love this woman. Uh, so I started singing a lot of Hellstrom songs and then uh, my other biggest influence is Lady Gaga because I just love her so much. So I guess most of them would be, they're mostly females, they, they are. Nice. So just for fun then, before we get out of here, I know you're big into fishing. I actually just came back from camping and doing the first fishing I've done probably since I was your age. Are you, <laughs> are you a catch them and, uh, you know, catch and release or do you bring them home and cook them or what kind of fishermen? I, I, are you? <laughs> I, do, I do catch and release. Yeah, I, I do. I mean, I have caught fish and, and brought them home and, and cooked them, but uh, most of the time I just do catch and release. Nice. All right. So I want to thank you for taking some time. My wish for you is when, when I first uh, got back into doing this professionally, it was like 2010. And one of the first interviews I did was with Lizzie and the guys. And I told her then, I said, you're going to get so big one day. I'm not even going to be able to interview you anymore. And that lasted for exactly two albums and I was proven right. So my hope for you is that you get so big that you don't have time for a little guy like me to do these interviews. So you oh, keep doing you so what you're much. doing. So thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for spending the time. I appreciate you. Love the music and looking forward to that announcement when it comes. Totally.